Did you know that the B18C1 GSR Honda engine is one of the only B-Series engines to come with a crankshaft girdle? It makes the bottom end quite a bit stronger, which is why I think that this thing is going to absolutely tear up Gingerman Raceway after making over 500 wheel horsepower and running a 1071 in the quarter mile. But today's video does not tackle power, it tackles the opposite. We're going to try to make this car stop better. And the way that I'm going to do it is something that some of you have definitely heard of before, but I'm sure there are more of you out there that have no idea that this is even a thing. The big brake upgrade that I'm referring to is using a Mini Cooper rotor from a 2007 Mini Cooper base model. It's a 180 millimeter rotor. Brake calipers from a first gen Honda CRV. Steering knuckles from a 96 to 2000 Honda Civic EX or SI. And brake pads from an Acura TSX. Four different cars four different brake parts, all exact bolt-on for the Honda Civic EGEK. All of the parts to do this entire big brake upgrade, not including the ball joints, because you might not need to buy those, or you could get AutoZone ones, cost me this much. It should be an extremely low number. I haven't added it up yet, so I'm not sure, but it should be an extremely low number compared to all the other big brake upgrades that are out there. I've never driven a car on track with actually good brakes before, so this is something that I'm extremely excited to try out on track, but the problem is I don't have any of the parts. Thank you to Throttle for sponsoring today's video. I found some of my favorite mods that I have on my EG and my 8th gen, which is off camera, on www.throttle.com. Things like my Sparco seat that's in my 8th gen, my Momo steering wheel that's in my EG, you guys know I love that thing, and a bunch of engine parts that are in the built LSV Tech engine that's going back in the EG shortly here. You guys have not seen that yet. Link in the description down below to all the parts that I just mentioned. Use code BOOSTED at checkout for up to 15% off your entire order on www.throttle.com. I do earn a small commission on all purchases made using my code, Thank you to you guys and thank you to Throttle. Let's get back to the video. I ordered some calipers for 30 bucks a piece, two front rotors for a Mini Cooper, and some Hawk HP Plus brake pads for an Acura TSX. The next step is gonna be finding some steering knuckles. Fortunately, I recently made friends with a guy named Eric who happened to have a set of knuckles just lying around for a Civic EX. He sold them to me for 20 bucks because he wasn't sure if they were actually EX knuckles or not. I took the chance, brought them home, and compared them to my old stuff, and it looks like they're going to work. The only problem is one of them doesn't even have a ball joint, and the other one one's ball joint is definitely clapped out. So we're gonna need to put some new ball joints in these knuckles. Instead of getting the cheap ones and just going the AutoZone route, I decided since I'm putting all this time into making these knuckles nice and doing like a nice big brake upgrade kit, I'll spend a little bit more and get some True Heart Roll Center adjusters, which does help correct your suspension geometry when lowering your car. I'm gonna leave links to as many of these car parts as I can find in the description down below in case you guys wanna try to do the setup for yourself. And if that helps you out, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. like danger. like an upgraded ball joint. They're a lot taller than the stock one, so it fixes your suspension geometry on your lowered car. I have these in my old knuckles, but obviously new knuckles, so new ball joints. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pressed in. Ow, oh, that's so hot. ready to be installed in the car with a new True Heart Roll Center Adjuster. Okay, now that the knuckles are ready to go, it doesn't make any sense to throw them in yet because if you remember from two videos ago, one of the main things on my list is that I have to swap the transmission over to my short ratio transmission, B16 1 through 4, LS5, Quaif LSD, from my HCB EK hatch from last year. That was a lot of words, I'm sorry. The shorter gear is gonna make it so much more fun to drive on track NA, I'm very excited. So. Let's get this trans installed because it doesn't make sense to put the knuckles in and then have to take them back out to swap the trans. Yeah. 
Too bad, couple hours of work, new trans in the car. The rotors and calipers just came in, but the pads aren't here yet. So let's at least test fit the rotors on the knuckles with the calipers, make sure everything bolts up and rotates nicely. Ah, it hurts so bad. Ah, I hope my fingernail is still on. That hurts so bad. Dude, that's pretty dope. Dude, <laughs> that is pretty gnarly. Let's do a quick side-by-side uh, -side comparison here. 2007 Mini Cooper 180 millimeter rotor with a Honda CRV brake caliper. And we're gonna be putting some Hawk HP Plus TSX brake pads in it. Here is the stock setup. Dude, that is such a massive difference. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but wow, this is gonna be awesome, bro. I'm gonna have such good braking. As long as everything fits, obviously. I mean, the rotor clears the caliper just fine. Man, I'm pretty fired up here. All right, now that looks pretty good. While we wait for the pads to come in, I picked up some Vlox Tuner Series coilovers from Mark over at Valix Racing. It's like a nice mid-tier coilover. Doesn't have adjustable damping, but it's probably like some of the better coilovers you can get that don't have adjustable damping. So let's get those installed in the car. Then we can install the knuckles. Then we can put the brake pads in when they come in and bleed the brake. Mini Cooper rotor with a CRV caliper TSX pads on Honda Civic. Wow. Oh. Yeah, boy. Wow, dude, this is like a 15 minute job. I'm fired up on that. So I'm gonna measure the overall length of this coilover from the top to the cup. And then I'll make this one three quarters of an inch shorter than whatever this is. So we got exactly, wow, that's nice and easy. We got exactly 10 inches. We're gonna set this to nine and a quarter. Yeah, right about there. And then we'll get it installed and then we'll lock down the collar. The big dub of having long arms right here. You know, being tall is cool. Like I hit my head on a lot of stuff, which sucks. But being able to do this is kind of cool. But hitting your head on stuff is not cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that is how you install a coilover on an EG in like 10 minutes. Let's go, dude. Now, side note, you're probably wondering, dude, you just did big brakes in the front and you still have friggin' drum rears, dude. What the F? I'm basically waiting to replace these. I'm waiting to make these rear discs for one of two things to happen. One, the shell gets too rusty and I just scrap it. It's a possibility. Two, I have an issue with the rear brakes. I haven't had an issue with the rear brakes yet. Fingers crossed. I don't during this process that I'm doing right now. But once I have an issue with the rear brakes and there's a reason to mess with them, I don't really feel like dealing with drum brakes, man. It just sounds so miserable. So I'll convert to rear disc once I have an issue with the rear brakes. Is your lock? 
Back coilovers installed, put the wheel back on, and I'll go on to the other side. Dude, the nice red coilovers is looking really good on this car. I'm so excited for this car to finally be low again. I've had it in drag spec, so it's been like monster truck mode to clear these big slicks. But I love my low cars, so I'm so excited to have this thing back in track spec. Knuckles with new ball joints are installed, transmissions in, new coilovers are installed, and the pads finally just came in. Let's get them I installed in the car. Fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands. Yeah, uh, pad to rotor. Spot on. Oh my goodness. Dude, it looks like these TSX pads are going to fit perfectly on the Mini Cooper rotor with literally no overhang. I know some of the guys that run like Type R pads will have a little bit of overhang on the rotor. TSX is the way to go. It shifts it a little bit more central on the rotor, which is perfect for the pad fitment. Wow. TSX pads with uh, CRV caliper with Mini Cooper rotor fitment is perfect as long as you're running an EX knuckle. That is so sick. I gotta see what it looks like with a wheel on it. Oh, dude, that's freaking beast. Oh, dude, it fills up the wheel well so nicely. The rear is gonna look so comical now. Oh, that's freaking epic, bro. I have a feeling that this car is gonna be pretty badass on track. I'm extremely excited to see where the limits of these brakes are and if I can even reach them. And to end this video off, instead of just ending it here, I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek from the next video of being at the racetrack and ripping it so you can see just how well the brakes perform. I'm just gonna give you guys like a little teaser. Is that boosted, John? What up? <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I can't wait to show you guys the next video from Honda Meet. It was seriously so much fun and it was such a chaos disaster, but also a blast at the same time. It was such a bipolar event. I'm so excited to show you guys that video. I hope you've enjoyed this little series. Please consider subscribing and checking out my merch store, www.earneverything.shop, where you can find a hoodie, t-shirt, uh, two t-shirts actually. And I'm working on a few other things right now. They're just taking some time to get onto the site. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one at Honda Meet at Gingerman Raceway, July, 7th through the 9th with the NA GSR EG hatch. We deserve nothing, earn everything. This is a magnetic drain plug and here is what is on it after a 10 second pass stock motor making over 500 wheel horsepower. That's it, barely anything. That's unreal. That's so good. Also, I just cut open the old filter and uh, there is absolutely zero sign of any metal in the oil. There's no sparkles, nothing. It is perfectly clean. Not many people in the comments have been actively doubting the power of the stock GSR, but I'm kind of just putting this out there as information for you guys to uh, receive and make decisions and opinions on. The engine, according to the oil change, is perfectly healthy. Now, obviously, I could drive 10 minutes down the road and uh, it could spin a bearing or throw a rod or something, who knows, but there is no excessive metal in the oil whatsoever and the oil filter was very clean. Stock motor, over 500 horsepower, 10.7 in the quarter.